Good afternoon to everybody tuned in. Thank you for making it Miss Kitty Live right here on Nationwide 90 FM. We've got you covered wherever you are in the world. So tune in, turn on, log on, listen in, and please do remember to spread the word. Now, many persons have traveled many times to, you know, far places, right? The United States, to Canada, Australia, to Europe. I've never made a Europe trip, so I'm looking forward to that. Have you ever been to Europe, Calico? No. Okay, where in Europe? Are you fascinated by Europe at all? Do you, is there anywhere? Yes, I would love to go. Yeah, I've, I've been to to England before. Oh, nice. So that yes. yeah, so that's a Europe kind of call. No, no, I'm going to call it. You've been really going away. Oh, one place I'm really. Oh, you know, really you're not really tour. tour. Yeah. Oh, you want the tourist vibes. You want to go around the place. Oh, man. Yeah, that's the, okay, I, mean? I get you, honey. I got you. I got you. So you want the tourist vibes. You yes. want your camera. You want your bobby socks and your sneakers. Yeah, more know the road, the road the man. You know? <laughs> did, yeah. you t- did you go on the uh, double-decker bus? No, I did not. You go. You went to the red phone I, booth? No, I didn't. Okay, say never read it. I understand. I like, like, go like a couple mile and that was it. Oh, okay. So you want to tour the city? Yeah, I want to tour. Okay, it? very well. Take well, some picture and them something there. I like that. I yeah. like that. I've <laughs> always wanted to go to France. You know, I'm very... And Italy. And so I, I, I really want to... I'm looking forward uh, to going to that side of the world. But as I've often said, you know, even though we are fa- oftentimes fascinated with far afield, there are wonderful islands right next to door that we can visit, that we can enjoy and that we can definitely take our family and friends and do a vacation and learn about those who are nearest to us. And so this afternoon in my Caribbean Connect, I wanted to connect with persons from the Turks and Caicos Islands. And I got to tell you, this lady is wonderful. She's a friend of mine. Big up to Tango. I met the link, link, the link. You know what I mean? And she is an attorney at law. She is also a minister of government. She is the minister of physical planning and infrastructure development in the Turks and Caicos Island. She is the Honorable Akira Mary Diane Misik, and she's my very special guest here on Miss Kitty Live. Good afternoon to you. How are you doing, Minister? I'm well, Miss Kitty. Good afternoon to you, to DJ Calico, to your nationwide 90 FM family, to the Jamaican masses in Jamaica and in Turks and Caicos. And of course, to my lovely people from the Turks and Caicos Islands. Wonderful. It's so great to have you on my show and to be linking with you in my Caribbean Connect. Well, let me just give some background information to my listeners and my viewers. So Turks and Caicos Islands is an overseas territory of the United Kingdom in the West Indies. It consists of two groups of islands lying on the southeastern periphery of the Bahamas, of which they they form a physical part, and north of the island of Hispaniola. The name Turks is said to be derived from a species of indigenous cactus, the Turk's head, whose scarlet top resembles a fez. The name Caicos may derive from Kayahiko, a phrase meaning string of islands in the language of the indigenous Arawak people. Cockburn Town, the capital, located on Grand Turk. However, the main commercial hub is Providenciales. Information from 2012 shows it having a population of 31,618. And as of July 2020, they are estimated to have 55,926 people living there. The currency of the Turks and Caicos Islands is the United States dollars. Hmm. The island, the Turks group, is composed of Grand Turk Island, Salt Key, and the Lesser Keys. The Caicos group lies northwest of the Turks and is separated from from them by a deep marine trench called the Turks Island Passage or the Wall. The Caicos group consists of six uh, principal islands, South Caicos, East Caicos, Middle or Grand Caicos, North Caicos, Providencialis and West Caicos, along with several other keys. Minister, did I do my research? Did I get it right? Your music is on point. You've taught me much about this, <laughs> this afternoon. <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely. Well, Minister, it's great to have you uh, on my show. As I said, it's definitely an honor. And, you know, you're absolutely amazing, very affable, knowledgeable, and you represent well. Congratulations again on your ministerial appointment. And I'm so very happy uh, for you as well. But, you know, in this time of, you know, the pandemic, we have had to, you know, do some introspection. We have had to be grounded 
you know, many of us would be traveling up and down the place, going all over the world. But then because of the pandemic, we have had to stay at home. How has Turks and Caicos been managing with the COVID-19 pandemic since last year? What are things like there now? here are getting better day by day we've hit probably one of our all-time lows for the first quarter of this calendar year we're at about a positivity of 25 persons in the islands unfortunately early er, this year we did have a significant increase in persons who succumb to the COVID-19 virus and yes. its various complications so as a result of that we did have about eight deaths between January and and April. Yes. We do have the vaccine. We are rolling out the vaccine here. We have the Pfizer version and a handful of the AstraZeneca. And we're just trying to get back to normal as best as possible so that our economy can continue to maintain itself and our people can get back to as normal as it can be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, overall, I see where you guys have had 17 deaths. Uh, in terms of compliance uh, to protocol, you know, wearing the mask, social distancing, and sanitizing, how have the Turks, you know, the people there adapted to those? We adapted quite quickly. So we actually had masks put in place as early as March last year when the pandemic really came to a head and the rest of the world started closing their borders. So we also followed suit by having our borders closed for about two months. Mm -hmm. Mask adherence is being complied with, hand sanitization is being complied with. The only challenge is when people are lining up, they forget the six feet, but we're doing our best to have the markers on the floors at various institutions. And the only part of compliance that we are still struggling with is the age group 18 to 35, mm -hmm. because we like to turn up. And instead of turning up at the club, people are now renting private villas and hosting private parties. But oh, wow. thanks be to God, we haven't had any real major outbreak at any of these events. So, yeah, so no super spreader events. Age group. Yeah, yeah, no super spreader. Let me ask you though, Minister, uh, what do you call, I mean, you know, like Jamaicans, people from Jamaica are Jamaicans, QP from Cuba, Cubans, uh, Bayesians. And so what are people from the Turks and Caicos Island called? We are Turks and Caicos Islanders, so we oh, refer to ourselves that? as Islanders. Okay. And in 2014, it was belongers, which is a term that Cayman Islands also uses. So we belonged to the Turks and Caicos Islands, but we've stepped up our game and refer to ourselves as Islanders now. Okay, very well. So the Turks and Caicos Islanders, good afternoon uh, to all of you. Now, Minister, every country has an identifying factor about them. What would people first think as they hear Turks and Caicos? What are you guys known for? Well, the first thing they'll think is, where is it? Yeah. <laughs> because it's still not as popular as, say, Jamaica and hey. Bahamas in the region. So the first thing they say is, uh, where is it? And then we say, oh, it's Southeast of the Bahamas near Dominican Republic in Haiti. And they're like, hmm. But once they board an airplane and get ready to land, the one thing that will resonate with everyone that visits these islands is just how beautiful our water is. Yeah. And it's the first thing you actually see as you approach the airport. Nice. Nice. I like that. And if we were to come there, because, you know, we the borders are going to open, you know, or the world rather is going to reopen soon. I know that there are a lot of people, you know, sketching and scheduling their vacations and yeah. where they want to go and, you know, what they want to experience. If there is somebody listening to my show right now who they're considering coming to Turks and Caicos, what would you say they could experience there on a vacation? Five uh, places that you would recommend as soon as they land where they should go and what they should do. Well, as soon as they land, I would encourage them to drop off their bags, put on their swimsuit or their shorts and their little hot shirts, and head out to the beach. We have 12 miles of pristine beach, which is called the Grace Bay Beach. It's award-winning TripAdvisor, Con Ness, and all of them. And I know I'm talking to a regional sister here. Yes. Each island believes their beach is the best <laughs> in the world. But I'm just going to say the awards show that my beach is best in the world. <laughs> I got to tell you, yes, <laughs> yep. So I definitely recommend that first, you know, just drop off the clothes. Best way to, to rinse away the travel, the luggage, the heat, get straight in the water, feel that white sand on your feet. And then the second thing I would recommend is any of the hotels you're staying at, or even if you're doing a private villa, that you head out to a restaurant called Magnolia. Magnolia. It is on one of the, Magnolia. It's yes. on the highest peak for a restaurant. We are very flat, I'm going to be honest. 
You know those beautiful mountains and rivers you have in Jamaica? Yes. We have none of that here. Oh, wow. We are very flat. But this little peak <laughs> is our little mini mountain. And from there, you will get some of the most amazing views of the Princess Alexandra National Park. And it lets you see to the other end of the island. The island of Providenciales is only 38 square miles. Yes. So it's not very big. But you actually, from that vantage point, can look east and west and see the tips of the island. And it's just an amazing sunset view. Nice. So definitely day one, get in the water at Grace Bay, have your dinner and cocktails at Magnolia. Now, I am a proponent because we're a chain of islands and I represent all of Turks and Caicos. So on day two, I want you to take a ferry over to what we call the twin islands of yes. Middle and North Caicos. And that's where you will see our real heritage still being on display with the basket weaving, the plantation life that was once there. You can even head to some of the farms and pick some crops that would tantalize your taste buds for the Turks and Caicos Islands. So the third thing would be a day trip to our twin islands, Middle and North Caicos. Yes. Okay, day trip. I like that. Yay. Yeah, day trip is good because you go on the boat, you know, you get to see Providenciales because you will land in Providenciales first. This is our main international airport. Yes. It is our most developed island. So it's our city in, in terms of the Turks and Caicos Islands. So day two will get you out of the city and get you into what some people call the country. Yes. But honestly, it's just two of the most amazing places to really be and connect with your ancestors and your roots and get away from city life and traffic. Basically. Nice. Okay. All right. What else is on the list? To-do list. And then after that, you'll come back to Providenciales. Now, if you're here for five days, I will encourage you to board a flight and head over to our capital, which is the island of Grand Turk, Coburn Town. And there you will see, it's only five square miles, seven square miles, but you will see our salt heritage. So it's an island that is still filled with salt ponds, which was our original trade when the Bermudans settled us many, many moons ago. And that's why the Bermudans and the Turks and Caicos Islanders have a rich history shared together and is where Mary Prince, the historic writer of slave times, yes. recalls her time working in the salt ponds here in the Turks and Caicos Islands. So you're going to get the Provo life on day one, north and middle, day two and day three, you'll head over to the capital Grand Turk and really see how we were able to feed and sustain ourselves during the salt trade. Nice, nice. Well, guess what? We're going to be... Last but not least. Yeah, last but mm -hmm. not least. Yes, go ahead. Well, I say come back to Provo and then it's nightlife. Hit up the Gray Space Strip and just bar hop, bar hop, bar hop. <laughs> bar hop, bar hop. And remember to drink responsibly. We're talking to the Honorable Akira Misik, Minister of Physical Planning and Infrastructure Development in the Turks and Caicos Islands, right here on my Caribbean Connect on Miss Kitty Live. The world is about to reopen, so we need to start planning. We need to start packing. We need to start dieting and exercising. Because when outside open up, we love a two-piece and eels are sweet. And so we are definitely doing or research as to what is available to us in the Caribbean islands. We're focusing on Turks and Caicos today, right here on Miss Kitty Live. More to come right after the news. And we're indeed live. Good afternoon to everybody locked and loaded. Good afternoon to Mavis McPherson, locked and loaded on my YouTube. Good afternoon to ya. Big ups to Marion Blake, you know what I mean? La, 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 Good afternoon to Angie B and all the YouTubers. Thank you so much for making it Nationwide 90 FM. And of course, Miss Kitty Live with me, your fluffy diva and DJ Calico. We're talking this afternoon to the Honorable Akira Misik, Minister of Physical Planning and Infrastructure Development in the Turks and Caicos Islands. As you guys know the world is about to reopen we're getting our vaccines we're getting ourselves together and hopefully herd immunity will soon take place and so we'll be able to travel and move our own move our own move around once again and so it's important that we plan ahead you know what are you gonna do when you're able to go to the airport hey, hey. When, calico you know something the first time when you book your ticket and you're gonna travel i don't think you can't sleep the night before my thing, to me, I pitch up myself, I pop my suitcase, and I practice off a walk yeah, with it. Smile, right, sure. Yeah, because right now, we would have forgotten how to, you know, walk with our little pulleys, you know, you and know. suitcase. You understand? Over fill out like an immigration form and all of that stuff. Can you imagine they touch about a la, um, um, airport? Oh, I'm going skin my teeth, so, like kidney for oh. Listen, I'm going to sleep. I'm going to sleep in my earpiece. What ear is sleep? 
<laughs> I am going to bathe from overnight and dress and lie down into the bed. So as the light, I just get up and just make one thing and go. I'm just imagining <laughs> the smell of the airport, the mm -hmm. plane seats. When you click yeah, that seat the belt. Foreign smell. And, the foreign, and then when, when the pilot says, flight attendants, prepare for takeoff. Lad. <laughs> I got to tell you. Let me tell you. I'm looking forward to that day when I shall call the travel agent to book the ticket. Okay? And line up your passport in your bag. And you, if you go up to your family, you can look at roast bread fruit, you can look at things or whatever it is. You don't look at shopping, right? Or if you're going on vacation, hello, please. You're going to just have your bathing suits ready. You're going to have your little hot shorts ready. You're going to just be so excited. Calico, I haven't been to the airport in ages now. I don't even mm -hmm. remember what out there looks like. Okay, and so I'm very excited. And maybe if you're contemplating going on vacation, Turks and Caicos could be one of the first places that you will visit. Minister, thank you so much for your patience and your time. In terms of, we talked about, you know, uh, some of the hot spots, the five, th uh, five things that, you know, people can do to have a great time, where they can visit and what they can do. As of right now, what is the COVID-19 travel restrictions? Are you guys open to the world right now? If somebody wants to to come to Turks right now? Could they do so? What are the prerequisites? Yes, Ms. Kitty. We have been open since July 22nd, 2020. Tourism is our bread and butter, yeah. and we were unable to stay closed much longer than we could have anticipated. So we've been open for a while, and we're one of the few jurisdictions that opened as early as we did. And we saw the, the bonuses of that. People were able to go back to work. Hotels were able to reopen. A lot of the private villas, private airlines, airplanes started coming in. And we've been calling ourselves the release of the pressure cooker <laughs> for our main I like state. that. I like that. <laughs> release. Yes, release. Release. Yes, the release. release. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, because, Minister, we've been under pressure, you know, and, you know, a lot of people, yes. though we have definitely smiled through the storm, we have weathered the storm, uh, it has been a very difficult ride for many persons, you know, uh, because we're not accustomed to the lockdown, the inability to move, the inability, the restrict travel restrictions. People have been away from their family members for months, for, for a year now. Uh, you know, it has been really, really difficult. And so I know that a lot of people are looking forward to that release where they can hook up with their families, with their friends, see something different. There's a change of vibe, a change of scenery, and doing so without having to worry or fret about, Lord God, did I touch my face? Oh my God. Did I wash my hands? Oh my God. Did I touch my eyes? Oh my God. You know, that kind of vibe of being able to have that communal spirit to which we are accustomed. Definitely. And so just to enter the island, as of May 1st, as long as you're fully vaccinated, two jabs, and can prove it, you would not need a PCR test. If you are unvaccinated, then you have to obtain a test and load it to our travel portal five days before your travel, and then we welcome you at the airport. Okay, that's great. Awesome. You spoke about hotels, Minister, and we want to know what are some of the uh, types of hotels or brands, rather, that uh, are in Turks and Caicos that we could book and that we can, you know, with which we may be familiar. We have such an array of offering from the super high end twenty million dollar villas. Tw so, sorry, sorry, what is it? Sorry, Minister, what is it? Uh -huh. Twenty million dollar villa. Million US, 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 yeah. Villa. You can book that too. Bring bring your squad, at least a hundred people to make it worth it. No, no, my friend Jamaica the, Island, the old islands. Yeah. Twenty million <laughs> So don't get that villa there, the twenty million dollar villa. They might do like liver transplant. What what do you get at that villa? Like what do they do? Every dream you ever could have imagined. I understand they are 100% full service. So you could oh, dream wow. it. I understand they could provide it. Now, how far that go? I cannot afford my $20 million villa. I ain't going over there. <laughs> I ain't going over there either. I ain't going. I, mean, I, mean, I, even, I would even turn my iris. I wouldn't turn my retina to look over there. So there are there is a, like a $20 million villa. Wow. Yes, we, have, we have villas. We have normal hotels. So just one of the biggest things that's happening to us in the island is a Ritz Carlton okay. has decided to grace us with their presence and obtain brand TCI status. And they're set to open in six short weeks. But normally our hotels are boutique hotels yes. that are not international brands, okay. but locally developed and sourced and 
have a really good clientele base. Okay, that's nice. What would you say is your national dish uh, in Turks and Caicos? This one has so much debate because I'm a Turks girl and a Caicos girl, so mm -hmm. I'm I'm gonna go with my favorite national dish, which is drum roll, please, cheese and grits and steam fish with a little bit of fried sweet flan and some avocado. Okay, all right. I'm going to take the time signal and then we're going to maybe, maybe hear that again and maybe get some recipe. Come and never hear about that before in my life. We're talking to the Honorable Akira Misik from the Turks and Caicos Islands. 415. You know, some little more than $20 million a while ago, dear man. I swear to you. <laughs> that, yeah, that mo yeah, I'm not saying, yeah, money. <laughs> we also have a beaches resort. Yes. So, you know, we have we have a, a nice family resort that people flock to as well. They have private villas on that property, which is a little expensive too. That's hot. That's rich. I got to tell you, that's so rich. <laughs> Turks and Caicos. But I'm happy that you have from the high end uh, to the very economic. So everybody has something uh, that they can get and that they can afford. So you're talking about the national dish and you said it's seasoned grits. Seasoned grits. Okay. For, for us, we were settled also... The, some of the Caicos Islands were settled by uh, American settlers. I yeah. think it's from the plantation time and, you know, ground corn and grits. It was a traditional southern food. Yeah. So they left that here. And you can actually get locally made one as well. But ours normally comes in a little packet with the word grits okay. right on it and the little white man with the hat. I think Uncle Uncle somebody yeah. on, on the bag. <laughs> Somebody, uncle. uncle. He ain't look like me, so he ain't mine. <laughs> yeah, your uncle. Um, <laughs> we, you know, in in researching about the Turks and Caicos Islands, uh, you guys are still under the UK uh, banner. You know, you're still uh, under UK governance, so to speak. And yet, the currency there is the United States dollars. Could you explain that for us? So that was uh, negotiation between the United Kingdom, Turks and Caicos Islands, and the US. United States in the early 80s because the bulk of our trade, we, we really don't grow much. So in order to sustain our livelihood, we import just about everything. I think we import 99% of whatever's here in the country. And because of our proximity to the United States, we're just 572 miles from Florida, the yes. state of Florida. We, in that time, we had our own currency. At one point we were under Jamaica as well. So we were using Jamaican dollars as our official currency, but as the bigger countries in the region started seeking independence, we were kind of left out there hanging around. Yes. So some quick thinking by seasoned politicians back then said, let us use the currency of our number one trade partner, which yeah. is the United States. So we don't have Turks and Caicos currency except for souvenirs. Our official currency is the U.S. dollar. Okay, very well. That's hot. So make sure you guys have your U.S. dollars when you're going to uh, the Turks and Caicos Islands. Uh, talk to me, Minister, about your flag and your national anthem as well as your national symbol. So your flags, your flag, your anthem, and your national symbols. So our flag, because we're still an overseas territory, has the lovely Union Jack in the upper corner. And then what distinguishes it from the other overseas territory is what is contained in our crest. So in our shield, we have some of my favorite colors and things that represent the Turks and Caicos Islands. My political party is the PNP, we're yellow. Yes. So it's that beautiful, bright yellow shield there, as well as our official symbol, it's a conch shell. Yes. But that's not why it's in the flag. It's in the flag because that was one of the ways we sustained ourselves with exporting conch and as part of the trade. So nice. that was one of our first trading opportunities we had as late as the 50s and 60s. Then you have the spiny lobster, mm -hmm. which we're very well known for, albeit persons remarket it when it goes overseas as their own, but it is the rock lobster. And again, that's one of our mainstay in economies. And of course, the Turks had cactus because you can't have Turks and Caicos without the Turks head. Right, right, right. Nice. And then you have a coat of arms on the shield as well. Arms yes. is a sim just a very tiny symbol that, again, shows our connection with the United Kingdom. And it has a flamingo on it, again, re representing the Turks and Caicos Islands, two flamingos holding the shield and the brown pelican on the top of the quasi-soldier crest. All right. Uh, soldier helmet, yeah. All right. And what about your anthem? So because we're British, and when I say we are British, yes, we are Turks and Caicos Islanders. 
but we hold British passports. So as a United Kingdom territory and British citizens, we have the National Anthem of God Save the Queen, save the which Queen. is the national anthem for all the overseas territories. Yes, and we say that in the court of law here to God Save the Queen. I got to tell you, yes. so yeah, the remnants are still very much here. And in terms of your national symbols, which can you tell us about? Well, the brown television I have never seen, but I'm told they were prevalent and everywhere in the early 80s. But I guess with development, we've kind of upset their habitat over the years. Mm -hmm. And they're probably on one of the lesser known islands that wouldn't have human population because the Turks and Caicos is actually a chain of some 40 islands, yes. but only six are inhabited. So I think the brown pelicans, they're hanging out in East Caicos <laughs> yes. because there's no humans there to bother them. Right, right, right. And then just the Caribbean pine is our national tree and the island heather is our national flower. Although again, like the brown pelican, I think them plants growing somewhere else. Yeah. I haven't seen it in Provo <laughs> okay. or Grand Turk. <laughs> our grand Turk. All right. So those are your national, uh, your national tree, your national, uh, well, your national tree, your national plant, and your national bird. Uh, I'm very excited. I have never, I am yet to come to Turks and Caicos. And so I'm very excited about the prospects of coming there. I have heard great things about the island. And so I am, I'm looking forward uh, to that time uh, when I'll be able to come firsthand and, you know, go to Mongolia and you know magnolia sorry uh, magnolia and to go to middle Caicos and you know do all of that stuff and i can come back and say hello i visited the turks and Caicos islands so i'm very excited about that in terms of visiting minister do people need to get visas to come there what do what are the travel requirements to come to turks so it varies if you have a u.s visa so this is for all my caribbean brothers and sisters who are listening in if you have a u.s visa then you do not need a specific visit to turks and Caicos visa if you are from the Caribbean region, if you're American, 90 days, European, 90 days. And unfortunately, our colleagues and brothers and sisters in Haiti, they do require a visa in order to enter. Some of our colleagues in the Dominican Republic as well would yes. require a visa to enter. But if you do have a U.S. visa, then you don't have a, need a separate visa to enter the islands. And because our main transport is through Miami, that's why you don't really need a second visa if you uh, can go through the United States. Yeah. But with Jamaica, we do have direct flights. So, Miss Kitty, yes. enter Caribbean. You see it at the Norman Manley Airport yes. all the time. Jump on. It's only an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, an hour and 15 minutes, guys. And so we're looking forward uh, to going to the Turks and Caicos. In terms of, you know, uh, uh, you know, there's been a lot of upheaval uh, the world over. We've seen it in the United States, you know, in Myanmar. Uh, there are a lot of, you know, world, uh, you know, violence going on and upheaval all across uh, the world in different places. In terms of K Turks and Caicos right now, uh, you know, crime and, you know, violence is everywhere. Uh, how are you guys managing with that? Is that a problem for you? How do you manage with that? What's the crime rate like? And, you know, are people, uh, you know, kind of at each other? Well, the crime rate here is low when you compare it to the rest of the world, especially if you compare it to the region. But because we're such a small country and our Turks and Caicos Islander population is small, when one of us is affected by crime, we all feel it yeah. in the territory. And so statistics would show crime is low worldwide for us. But here in the islands, we would feel that it is a bit more elevated mm -hmm. than what statistics would say that we should naturally feel. Mm -hmm. But in general, in the last three months, remember, we just came out of an election. Yes. So there's still a bit of euphoria and crime rates are low at the moment. But as we open up the country a bit more, there's more tourism dollar flowing through. We know that the or the detriment of being so developed is an increase in crime and persons disagreeing and you have lovers quarrels or persons owe each other money that's just human nature so generally crime is low in the turks and caicos islands but as a turks and caicos islander who lives here and knows the effects of crime for various families and persons i interact with i would say there's a lot more for us to do as a government yes. in partnering with our community to stamp out 
sort of violent behavior. So yeah. we're working, it's a work in progress, but we have to do it together. Absolutely. Not just led by the government or the police. Yeah, all hands have to be on deck uh, because it it affects everybody. So from January, Minister, how many persons, uh, you know, do you have any numbers, if you can, any statistics? Uh, like in Jamaica uh, already, uh, you know, our, <laughs> our crime rate is, you know, where it it's like astronomical as far as I'm concerned, uh, concerning to everybody. What what are your figures like there? Um, we are taking the most heinous crime, which is murder. We've had three murders this year already. Okay, and that's that's three too many, in all of our books. It seems to be retaliation. Different groups of young men, unfortunately, are dealing with each other without using mediation and calm head techniques. That's how they're dealing with their squabbles by attacking each other or taking each other out. So unfortunately, we've had three murders for wow. the year. Wow. I, well, I know. Well, you know, as bad as that is uh, for you guys, you know, which I mean, a, the loss of a life is one too many. You know what I mean? And we'd rather not obviously have those. And so those numbers are really elevated uh, in other places. So three and you guys are working to curtail and cauterize uh, the spread of violence. And that is definitely um, a good and positive thing. Minister, persons are looking to come. Persons are looking to have fun. Persons want to, you know, experience just some release uh, from all that has happened. Why should persons come to the Turks and Caicos Islands and make it their vacation destination of choice? Well, the reason why I would recommend Turks and Caicos Islands is that it is absolutely stunning and beautiful and it allows every price point in the world who wants to have a vacation in a true last paradise to find an opportunity to get themselves on this island and enjoy their stay. Our food is eclectic. Yes, we have our traditional island dishes, which is fish and conch with a little Jamaican influence, a little Dominican influence, a little Haitian influence in our national dishes because we are a melting pot. Nice. Our currency, for some people, think it's very easy to travel with. So, hey, if you like the U.S. dollar, <laughs> come and spend it down here with us. And we have seven direct flights from North America daily. And last but not least, we are a warm people. We are a very small people. So when you come here, you will feel like you are in the Caribbean because you will hear different accents. You will hear persons who sound like me. You will hear some with a little more British accent. Yes. You'll definitely hear the Americans and the Canadians. But you will hear the Jamaicans and the Haitians and the Dominicans, as well as our brothers and sisters from the Bahamas as well. So we're a melting pot and we're, we can't wait to welcome each and every one of you to our islands to enjoy what we get to call home. Absolutely. We're looking forward to it. A round of applause there uh, for Minister Akira Misik. And I feel like I want to... I feel like I want to almost plan like a group trip, you know, like let me do a Miss Kitty, you know, group trip or something. Did somebody say group trip? I think somebody said group trip. Yeah, I'm down, I'm down. yeah, I'm down for that. I'm down for that, Minister. I think that we should, you know, I should do a group trip. We should all just come to the Turks and Caicos Islands, turn up and, you know, hey, just rock it, you know. But I, I, I'm really, really looking forward to that, Minister. And I want to just say thanks to you. Uh, for taking time out of your busy schedule to share with us about your beautiful island. Uh, there are many uh, of my listeners and viewers who would have heard about Turks and Caicos, but they've never really spoken to somebody from Turks and Caicos uh, so as to know what are the attractions, uh, what are the you know things to do there, what you can enjoy, what do you guys have, and all of that. And so hearing from somebody there, especially someone in a ministerial position, is definitely an eye-opener, and I'm quite sure an invitation uh, to many persons. Uh, thank you so much, Minister, for sharing. And as soon as I get my squad together, I will let you know when we're going to come to Turks, all right? I'm looking forward to welcoming you and the squad, Miss Kitty, and thank you to your nationwide family, your audience, and everyone that's tuned in. It was really a privilege to spend this last hour with you. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much. The honor is also ours. The Honorable Akira Mary Diane Misik, Minister of Physical Planning and Infrastructure Development in the Turks and Caicos Islands. It's Miss Kitty Live on my Caribbean Connect. We're connecting, right? Because out door soon open, and we need to refamiliarize ourselves with what is happening, where we need to go, where we can go, so that we can save toward it, we can plan toward it. Because Calcom, men are really intending on 
now. If you sit down, I'm a yard, you know, one more time, you know, you understand? Because I'm a tell you, say, a straight, yes, me a press. You hear me, I tell you. One already. Me run already to a move outside. You understand? <laughs> Um, yeah, I was gonna, yeah, you yeah, know what? I'm just gonna yeah. not rhyme mm -hmm. that right there. Yeah. <laughs> Go easy, <laughs> unbreak, yay! We're gonna take a quick. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Calico, you saw the rhyme. <laughs> I tell you, it was going right there. <laughs> But I'm gonna just pull back mm. and not go right there just yet, you know. To one I, side. Exactly. I gotta tell you. Nationwide 90 FM Miss Kitty Live on an island Tuesday. Good afternoon to everybody in Jamaica from the Turks and Caicos Islands. And of course, if you're locked and loaded on my YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook Live, and you are from Turks, big up your nice clean self. It's Miss Kitty Live on Nationwide 90 FM. Miss Kitty Live.